Hey guys, Kenneth here and welcome to my movie corner and today I am here to review the movie Joker. Yes, this movie stars Joaquin Phoenix, Robert De Niro and Sassy Beats and this movie is directed by Todd Phillips, the guy most known for bringing us the Hangover trilogy and this movie is pretty much the origin story for the Joker. Now, when this movie was announced, people had the same feelings like when they announced Venom. Remember when they announced Venom, people were like, oh, how do you make a Venom movie without Spider-Man? Same with Joker. People were like, how do you make a Joker movie without Batman? Then, they, then people got more excited when it was announced that Martin Scorsese was going to produce this movie, but obviously he dropped out months later due to scheduling conflicts. conflicts. Then it was announced that Joaquin Phoenix was going to star as Joker. People were like, dude, this guy is one of the greatest actors working today. So, of course, there's something special in this movie that might have caught his attention. And, to be honest, I was really excited for this movie because it looked dark, it looked gritty, it looked raw, similar to Logan. To be honest, I think we need to get more comic book movies like this. Just dark, gritty, and raw. Which is something that I was really looking forward to in this movie. Then the trailers came out. The trailers looked phenomenal. I was like, I can't wait to see this movie. Then the reviews came out. People were praising the hell out of this movie, calling it movie of the year. This actually won an award in the Venice um, in the Venice um, Festival. Yeah, this won an award. And to be honest, I was like... I can't wait to see this movie, but to be honest, deep inside, I was fearing this movie was going to be a disappointment because remember once upon a time in Hollywood, how excited I was to see that movie and then how disappointed I was? I was like, please don't be another once upon a time in Hollywood. Well, after seeing this movie, I must say, I love Joker. This might be my favorite movie of the year. Like. And it's probably going to be my favorite movie of the year because I love every second of Joker. Every second of this movie, I was just hooked to the screen. I was like, damn, my eyes were glued. I was like, this is phenomenal. Like, this, and it's a word to describe this movie, phenomenal. This could pretty much be what every comic book movie will attempt to be. Because this movie for me was like something special. Now, before I start praising the movie, what is the story about? The story is pretty much about this guy, Arthur Fleck, and pretty much his descent into madness and his transformation into the Joker. I don't want to get that much into spoilers. I know this movie has been out for two weeks, but still, I don't want to get into spoilers. Now, the first positive is, of course, the thing everyone is praising the most, Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck or the Joker. Now, Joaquin Phoenix was phenomenal. I have no words to say about his performance other than phenomenal because, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix, every second he was on screen, I couldn't take my eyes away from him. He was that good. Like, even though the character of Arthur Fleck does some really despicable things, I couldn't take my eyes away from him because Joaquin Phoenix just gave this his all to play this character. And you can tell, he gave a really dedicated performance. Please, Academy, give this man an Oscar. I don't care who is competing with him. This man deserves an Oscar for his performance because he was, like I said, phenomenal. Now, the character of Arthur Fleck was very interesting. He is a despicable character. He does some things that are horrible, but still, you just can't take your eyes away from him because he starts off being the sympathetic guy. This guy who just, you just want to give a hug to, to just become pretty much an irredeemable character. And the transformation is so well done. Like this could have easily felt like a drag, but the transformation from Arthur Fleck into the Joker was well written and well executed. And the character of Arthur Fleck was compelling. 
He was well written, and there are points where he comes out as sympathetic. There are some points where you're like, "Oh, poor creature," even though he does some really horrible things that are that have no excuses. You just can't take your eyes away from him, especially when he becomes that irredeemable character. You just couldn't take your eyes away from him, all thanks to the brilliant writing and the brilliant performance by Joaquin Phoenix. But yeah, this might be my favorite performance of the year. Another praise would be the direction. The direction was flawless. Todd Phillips directed this movie flawlessly, especially with the cinematography. The cinematography was gorgeous. Every shot I was like, damn, that's a gorgeous shot. So yeah, direction and editing and cinematography, flawless. Another positive would be the R rating. I'm thankful that this movie is rated R because Warner Brothers could have easily made this movie PG-13 the same way as they did with Suicide Squad because I still stand by. Suicide Squad should have been rated R, but yeah, they could have easily turned this into a PG-13 movie. I'm glad this is rated R because this shows how violent the Joker is. This is a violent movie. Sure, Watchmen and Logan are more violent than this, but still, there are some points where this movie gets very violent. You're like, wow, that's just fucked up. And yeah, this is not like torture porn where it feels so in your face. The violence is not that frequent, but when the violence comes, you're like with your jaw, with your jaw dropped to, to the floor, like, yeah. And the other members of the cast gave really great performances from Robert De Niro as this talk show host, the beautiful and delightful sassy beats as Sophie Dumont, who is Arthur's love interest, and that actress, I don't remember her name, that plays um, Arthur's mom, and of course, Brett Cullen as Thomas Wayne, they were all phenomenal. My problem would be the side characters were pretty forgettable, but still, the, their acting was perfect. Also, there's a twist. I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a twist. I literally didn't saw it coming. There are some twists you do see coming, but that twist that happens in one point of the movie, I'm not going to spoil it because in case you haven't seen this movie, I was just like, what the fuck? Also, you got to give praise to the production design. The production design was great. You actually feel like you're in Gotham City during the 80s. And to be honest, it wouldn't be a place I would like to live because, yeah, Gotham in the 80s looks very fucked up. Like crime, a lot of murder, a lot of, you know, things that would make, that would make New York or Detroit look like a safe place. But yeah, you actually feel like you are in this setting and... Yeah, the immersion was just amazing. And also the score. The score was great. It actually matched every scene of the movie and also the ending. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but I'll just say this. When the movie ended, I was just like, yeah. It was just me and my uncle in this deserted theater, and I was just like, yeah. I'm not going to spoil the ending, but once you see this movie, you're actually going to be like, wow. As far as negatives, my only like issue with the movie would be the side characters are pretty forgettable, but here would be a warning. Don't expect this movie to be like your standard superhero movie because this is not a superhero movie. This movie is more like an art house film, but with a character like the Joker. This feels more like an A24 movie rather than a DC movie. And this movie is slower. Like, this movie kind of reminded me of Avengers Endgame where it's pretty slow and it's built up. So, if you're not into slow movies, you're not going to like this movie because... Yeah, this movie, if you are expecting to see Joker shooting everyone here and there, yes, you're going to get it, but it's pretty few. Like, this is more 90% Arthur Fleck, 
10% Joker. So, like I said, if you're not into slow movies or into art house movies, yeah, you're going to have a difficult a difficult time getting into this movie. Even though I'm not into art house movies, I really like this movie. But yeah, keep in mind, this is not your standard superhero movie. Now, before getting into my verdict, I'm going to talk about the controversy. Yes, I'm going to touch there. Yeah, the controversy was fucking stupid. Like, the controversy was just like, seriously? People are saying like, oh, Joker is going to start mass shootings. Oh, they are poisoning our youth. They're training our youth to become killers. First of all, this movie is about a super villain. Second of all, this is an R-rated movie, so you have no reason to bring your kids here. Like, please don't bring your kids here because this movie is violent. Like, but yeah, the controversy was just stupid. Like, people blaming this movie on mass shootings, that's just stupid. Like, I remember a movie called B for Vendetta. The, the lead is pretty much a terrorist that blows the parliament and blows several landmarks. And again... Again, he's a revolutionary, but still, those are heinous acts, and the people complain? No! And when The Hunger Games came out, it's pretty much about teenagers killing each other. That people complain? No! So why are people starting to complain about Joker? It's beyond me. That controversy is fucking stupid. Movies don't cause mass shootings. Similar with video games. Very polit A lot of politicians and people are blaming video games for mass shootings. Stop blaming video games and movies for mass shootings. They don't cause mass shootings. Like, go to China. China is like a big market when it comes to movies. Are there a lot of mass shootings in China? No. So why are you blaming movies for mass shootings? So yeah, the controversy was just stupid. Even my mother, like, I have autism, so she thinks this movie is going to influence me. I was like, no, it's not going to influence me because I know I shouldn't copy anything that Arthur Fleck does in this movie. And again, yes, Arthur does some really horrible things in this movie, but I'm not going to copy because copy them. Because first of all, that would get me a life sentence or worse, a death penalty. But yeah, I had a hard time convincing my mother to allow me to see this movie. But yeah, the controversy was just, like I said, stupid. Now, let's go through the variant. Joker is a fantastic movie. This is a fantastic comic book movie. This is a fantastic character-driven movie. Yeah, this movie was just fantastic. It, it might as well be my favorite movie of the year. I loved every second of this movie. I can't wait to get the Blu-ray for this movie. I'm going to get it. I might even go so far as to say I'm going to pre-order the Blu-ray. But yeah, I loved Joker. And yeah... If you like gritty, dark crime movies, I think you're going to like this. But again, don't go into this movie expecting an MCU movie. This is not an MCU movie. This is different than the MCU. Hell, even the DCEU. But yeah, Joker was just phenomenal. I'm going to give Joker a 10 out of 10. So yeah, those were my thoughts on the movie Joker. Let me know down in the comments. Did you like this movie? Did you hate it, this movie? Or here's a question. What is your favorite R-rated comic book movie? My favorite R-rated comic book movie would be Watchmen. I just love that movie from the first time I watched it. I fell in love with that movie. But yeah, let me know in the, down in the comments. As always, you can also follow me on my social media. The links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.